Well, hello and welcome to another episode in our Tribulation Soldier Comms YouTube and Facebook. And at the moment, I'm obviously working through the end times teachings, from the, mainly from the Book of Revelations. You'll have maybe heard of the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse and 666 and Mark of the Beast and all that sort of stuff. Well, loads and loads of questions come up in this and we're trying to answer as many as I can. But it is such an exciting subject and it's so, so interesting. It can be pretty heavy at times, like tonight this will be a bit more of a heavier one. But sharing this one tonight is actually quite crucial for understanding the next one. At the moment we've worked through three of the 21 judgments of God which happen in what we call the Tribulation Period. It's the first, second and third seal. Tonight we're going to the fourth seal. So as always guys, we are YouTubers, you know if you could hit that like, subscribe and hit notifications that would be awesome. Loads of videos coming up on this channel, we've got quite a few to add on and load up to populate, you know, so just hope you're really enjoying what we're sharing just now. Yeah, so now on to the fourth seal of judgement. We've went through the first horse, the second horse and the third and now we're on to the pale horse. The pale horse. And this one is called Death and Hell. So we've had, obviously had the three seals so far. We've had the Antichrist rise up, the one world government, the false prophet, the economic issues. He's been out conquering. There's been a lot of war. Of course, this is after what be the Christian term would be the rapture. Um, not too long after that. The true term is catching away where a vast amount of the world's population will be taken away in this rapture event. But in the fourth seal it says that a quarter, a quarter of that remaining world's population will die. So the question is, what we know in the world today is it's so difficult to believe that a quarter of the world's population could die. And it also answers the question, what happens when you die from the Christian's perspective? So in the book of Revelations it talks about um, the fourth, which is death and hell. And a quarter of the world's population are killed by the sword, which is obviously conflict, famine, and pestilence. And we've talked about the sword before, you know, the world conflicts and so on in, in earlier teachings. So, of course, we don't have too much famine in the world today. Again, it's always trying to show you the, the difference in scale. There is famine in the world today, but we're talking about worldwide famine in many, many different places. And a lot of that is caused by war. Again, we've spoken about that. The rise of the false prophet, he does the old 666 mark of the beast thing. You know, it's the only way you can trade and buy things. There'll be a huge shortage in the world. Yeah, so according to most, you can survive for about three days without water, pretty much. And we would say about three to four weeks without food. That's not a long time, really. You know, our bodies need nourishment every single day, you know. And some of us have three or four meals a day, you know, that's that's what most of us need. But in this time of the tribulation, it won't be a full famine till later, but there will be a great famine. And the last one is pestilence, which may, basically just means diseases. And of course, you know, with war, with famine, disease comes up from that. So it's not really difficult to believe in this time, you know, what we're actually talking about just now, that a quarter of the world's population could die. But with the above, there is no alternative to the body dying. So this is really the sharp edge, you know, and I'm being really open about this. You know, I can't water stuff down, that's not what I do. You know, this is the razor sharp part of what we believe as Christians. This is the razor sharp part of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that death is inevitable. But I'm really emphasising the physical body here. And again, like I said earlier, I've really got to share this so we can understand the next one. You know, the next seal. So it's very, very important. But when we talk about death, when it comes to the scriptures and as Christians, you know, death is only a physical part. You've still got your spirit and your soul. So it's explained in the scriptures as a departing, a separation of a physical body and the spirit and the soul. From the scriptures, the Christian faith, the belief is that there's only two places you can go when your body suffers a physical death. And most of you will know this, obviously, there's heaven and there's hell. And that's what it's quite commonly referred to, and quite rightly so. But let me define it fully, you know, just before we move on. Because it's crucial to understanding a lot of what's going to happen within the tribulation period. So both places are temporary places. You've got heaven and you've got hell, that's what they're commonly referred to. But the proper word for heaven in this sense, this temporary place, is actually paradise. And 
translated properly, it's the Edenic Garden. And it's shown in the scriptures as a place where it's almost like, you're like a big stately house. You're waiting for a time to come. It's like a waiting area. And you're in the garden being entertained until that feast comes. And of course the other, which is hell. And I suppose Hades is a better, a better term for it. Two temporary places until a day of judgment. But I was just wanting to try and illustrate, you know, that when a, the common belief is if you die, that's just that you're worm food and all the rest of it. And the Christian life, the belief that your body goes to the ground and that you go to this place called paradise. And when judgment day comes, it's called resurrection. You're brought back together to face the judgment of God. This is a huge subject, it really is. There's so many questions, there's just so many. But at the moment, I'm just trying to fill the timeline and give that kind of idea of what's actually happening through it. So the fourth seal is only one little verse in the scriptures. It just talks about this specific um, horse, the pale horse, the last one. But it takes a lot of study, a lot of experience and a lot of teaching to be able to share what I'm sharing today. A quarter of the world's population will suffer a physical death. So that's us more rightly now, a physical death. And we've already lost a big percentage of the world through the rapture. The believers have gone. I don't know, I mean, when that time actually comes, the, the population has to be 20 billion. We just don't know. And so I love to share through these sermons, you know, as looking at it and saying, well, are these things really far-fetched? I mean, could this happen? I mean, at the moment, um, there are about 12 and a half thousand nuclear weapons on the planet today. We know they exist, we know what they can do. So believing that a quarter of the world's population could suffer a physical death during this time is not very difficult at all. And that's just considering war. And the famine, of course, the Antichrist has risen up, the false prophets risen up. There's been war, economic turmoil. Famine is a very, very real and very, very easy thing to happen during this time. And the other is pestilence. And of course, the term we use for that is, of course, is just diseases. We don't really use that word as much anymore, but the Bible uses it. So a tiny little bit of history, just, just for the scale. The bubonic plague, 1346. Now, of course, records would be quite difficult. So the bubonic plague, the record was maybe two, 25, between 25 and 50 million people died. And the world's population at that time is estimated at 450 million. So that's a huge percentage. And it was localised around Europe, obviously. You know, travel wasn't what it was back then, obviously. Back in 1918, there was a string of influenza called the Spanish flu, and it killed about 50 million people. The thing that maybe the world's population back then was about 1.8 billion. And of course, the one that we all know and don't love is COVID. And guys, we've seen how a disease like that, a pandemic, affected the world in no time at all. COVID spread like wildfire. Back then in the bubonic plague and things like that, you know, there wasn't really that travel, it didn't spread. But now, there's people travelling all over the world all the time. And as we've seen, COVID was very, very real. I know this is really heavy stuff down, and it's really, really heavy. But, you know, I, I just, I can't water stuff down, you know. This, this is what's taught, this is what we believe, you know. This is what the scriptures say, so it's, it is heavy stuff. So do we have that capability? through war to kill that many people? The answer is absolutely yes. Famine, absolutely. And as we know with diseases, absolutely again. And in all these cases, it's actually pretty easy. Whew, so that was a lot. That was a lot. Guys, there's, I mean, there's so many questions you might have in your mind about what I've just shared, but they will be answered. Don't worry, they will be answered. It was hugely important for me tonight to actually just show you the, the true meaning of death, you know, what actually happens and where you go, because it spans right the way through this whole 21 judgments, you know. Unfortunately, the tribulation period, death is just a constant. And if we don't understand from the scriptures what that actually means, we're just not going to understand what's coming. So it has to be said so far, and I think most people who are experts in the scriptures agree, you know, that even at this point of the 21 judgments, it's still quite light. You know, we've got some big stuff coming up. I've said this in previous videos. Worldwide earthquake. All of the world's fresh water turning bitter. All of the ships destroyed. And that's just the name three. But I am going to keep these teachings very simple, as short as I possibly can. 
And like I said, I'll just layer them up and layer them up. Your understanding will build, it'll come together, you'll start getting it in your mind, you know. So there we are, that's the fourth seal, the fourth horseman of the apocalypse. We're obviously going to move on to the fifth seal. And again, it speaks about heaven and the earth at the same time, so you need to really understand about the whole death aspect. So thank you so much for sitting and listening. That was a lot, a little, a little short amount of time. So a really heavy teaching tonight. I think I really just need to leave it at that. You know, that's quite a lot. And, you know, there's so many questions that arise from this, and I'll answer them as we go along. These will all be answered quite naturally as we go along. But I'm just going to keep layering up the teachings. Like I said, that's what we're really trying to do, is just set the foundation and layer it all up. These teachings are supposed to be taught in such a way for everybody to understand, you know. I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible, try to keep as much of the Christian vernacular out of it and things like that, you know. I'm just really hoping you enjoy. So on a lighter note, guys, please don't forget to like, subscribe and hit notifications. It's like I said before, loads of videos coming up. But for now, thank you and God bless you.